All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, we're finally talking about Newton's second law. Usually in physics, when you talk about Newton's laws, you're primarily doing problems in the second law category. Uh, so I guess it's an important topic in the unit. Uh, so here we go. Newton's second law. <clears throat> the sum of the external forces on an object is directly proportional to the product of its mass and acceleration. Okay, what am I talking about over here? Pretty much what I'm saying is the combined force or the net force is equal to how much mass something has times the acceleration. Okay, and this should make sense. If there is a lot of uh, force acting on an object, there's a lot of combined force acting on an object, it is going to accelerate more. If an object doesn't have that much mass, if the mass is very small and you uh, apply a force to it, it's going to accelerate a lot. Okay, if you don't push it with that much, it won't accelerate that much and so on and so forth. Okay, so the amount of force you give something or I, I should say the amount of like combined force, because if something is pushing it really hard to the right, but also pushing it really hard to the left, the net force wouldn't be that much. Okay, anyway, let's do some examples. And I think It'll make more sense with examples. All right, so here is the product, uh, manipulation formula. We've kind of seen these triangles a lot. So pause the video to look at it if you like, uh, but we're moving on, okay? So these are the main formulas here. We have the sum of all forces equals to mass times acceleration, but it's also manip uh, manipulated for acceleration equals some uh, net force divided by mass, and mass is equal to net force divided by acceleration. Okay, pause it if you want to write it down. Okay, a good visual for this. Highly suggest watching it. Uh, okay, let's do some conceptual examples. If you push a heavy object and then push a light object with the same force, the light object will blank. Okay, if you push a heavy object and then push a light object with the same force, the light object will blank. And I guess in situations like this, I will, you want to make the scenario really big. So let's say you push something like this and then the huge object, and then you push something with the same amount of force, but it's a tiny object like that. What do you think is going to be the difference? So we should know uh, have a, a little, the light object will have a larger acceleration than the heavy object. And again, if we're looking at the formula, sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. If an object's mass is very, very small, let me just do it a different way. Sum of all forces is equal to tiny m, then that means the acceleration is going to be a lot bigger. Okay. <clears throat> Same if the uh, mass is very big, if we do the same amount of force, the acceleration will be a lot smaller. Okay, move on. If you push, push an object with a large amount of force and push the same object with less amount of force, the object that experienced less force will have a less of an acceleration than when it was pushed with a larger force. And I think that makes sense, you know. The smaller this F is going to be, uh, the smaller this A is going to be. However, the bigger this force is going to be, the bigger this A is going to be, okay? The more you push something, the more it's going to change its motion. The lighter you push something, the less it's going to change its motion. Okay, moving on. You push on a box on a frictionless surface. Then you push on the same box with two times more force. How will the acceleration of the box be the second time compared to the first time? Okay, so pause it if you want to try to figure it out on your own. But we're just going to kind of look at this. So we know the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And sorry, maybe I should explain this. This this symbol here uh, symbolizes the sum of. So it's just like all the combined forces is equal to mass times acceleration. <clears throat> so, um, okay, what, let me see. Uh, then you push the same box with two times more force. How will the acceleration of the box be the second time? Component? Okay, so if this force over here increases by a factor of two, that means we should know that this other side of the equation needs to also increase by a factor of two. And we know it's the same box, so the mass won't change, but that means the acceleration will uh, change by a factor of two, accelerating two times more. Okay, uh, similar question. You push on a box on a friction surface, then you push on another box that is twice as heavy with the same force. How will the acceleration of the second box be compared to the first box? Okay, so. Sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And for the second box, we know sum of all forces. We push with the same force, but the mass 
it has two times the amount of mass. So we know we should know that if we have if we're pushing with the same amount of force and it has two times more mass, the acceleration is going to be less. But how much less? Well, it needs to be the same amount. So if this is 2m, that means this acceleration has to be half so the twos can cancel out with each other. Okay? So two times left or half. Okay, moving on. Number 14, you push on a box on a friction surface, then you push on another box with the same force. The second box, then you push on another box with the same force. The second box accelerates at half of the rate of the first one. What is the mass of the box compared to the first one? Okay, so similar. Sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We do it again. We push with the same force. But this time, we see that the acceleration is just half. Uh, that means that we know if the force is the same and it's only accelerated half as much, that means we should know that this mass is two times, uh, has two times the amount of mass, okay? So that these two can cancel out and equal each other. All right, let's look at example number 15. You push on a box on a friction surface, then you push on another box with twice as much force, okay? This second box has half the amount of mass compared to the first box. What is the acceleration of uh, the second box compared to the first one? Okay, so let's see. We do sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. That's the first box. But for the second box, we see that we push it with, well, let me just write it out first. We push it with twice as much force. Okay, so it's two times as much. But we also know that the mass, the box is lighter. It's half as light as the first one. So if we're pushing it harder and it's lighter, we should know that the acceleration is going to be a lot more. So what we have is on this side of the equation, we increase by a factor of two. So that means on this side of the equation, we need to also increase by a factor of two. So this acceleration is going to be four times as much The four times one half is equal to two. Okay. Hope that makes sense. That one was a bit tricky. That was definitely on the hardest side. So if that you didn't completely get that, it's okay, uh, but try to watch it again. All right, let's fill in the blanks for the table. Okay, again, net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so uh, you, you should definitely be using the triangle formula from last time. Um, this one to help you with that, but uh, I'm just going to go through this. Hopefully, you got it all right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> 8 is equal to mass times acceleration. As you know that we should be using the formula, acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. So I should do 8 divided by 0 0.78. So 8 divided by 0 0.78, 10.25, okay? Uh, 10 point, shoot, sorry, 10.25 or 26 rounding meters per second squared, okay? Uh, next one. 22 is equal to mass times 6. So we're looking for mass here. So I should do M is equal to F over A. F is 22. A is 6. So let me put that in my calculator. 22 divided by 6. And we get 3.67. 3.67 kilograms. Okay. And then <clears throat> I should know net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Oops. The mass is equal to 14. Acceleration is equal to 32. 14 times 32. And get 448 newtons. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one thing I just wanted to do. This one should be meters per second squared. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, next one, that force is 50 newtons. Uh, and then we're looking for mass. Mass is equal to F divided by A. So F is 50, acceleration is 12.3, sorry, this should be meters per second squared. And 50 divided by, oops, 50 divided by 12.3 is equal to 4.07 kilograms. All right, guys, uh, moving on, here we go. If something is moving with a constant velocity of 20 meters per second, how much acceleration does it have? Okay, pause if you need, but the key thing here is constant velocity. 
If something is moving with constant velocity, that means its state of motion isn't changing. It's just going 20 meters per second, at least from this given time, forever. Uh, yeah, so 20 meters per second, constant velocity. So that should tell us if it's not changing its motion, the acceleration is zero. Okay, next one. If something is moving at with a constant velocity of 1 million meters per second, how much acceleration does it have? Again, constant velocity here meaning zero acceleration. Okay, it's not changing its velocity. It's not changing its motion. Okay, a boulder is being pushed and experiencing a net force of 42 newtons. Find the acceleration of the boulder if the boulder was A, 18 kilograms, uh, B, 36 kilograms. Okay, so let's do A first. So we should know sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration, but what we're looking for is the acceleration. So we can rearrange this. Acceleration is equal to sum of all forces divided by M, so let's do that. Uh, net force is 42. The mass is 18. <clears throat> Let me put that in my calculator. 2.33 kilograms. Oh, 2.33 meters per second squared. Great. Uh, part B. Same kind of steps. I'm going to step uh, skip step one. I just we're looking for acceleration, so we're doing sum of all forces divided by mass. So we're pushing 42. And maybe I should ask before we solve it, which one's going to have more acceleration. And we should know it's going to be A because it has less mass. So 42 divided by 36, and we get 1.17 uh, meters per second squared. Okay. All right, next one. A boulder is being pushed and experiencing a net force of 50 newtons. The boulder experiences an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. What is the mass of the boulder? So again, sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration, but we're looking for mass. So we're going to rearrange this. Mass is equal to sum of all forces divided by A. Uh, the net force is 50. Acceleration is 5. So I know that mass is going to be equal to 10 kilograms. Okay, moving on. Ooh, let's see, getting a little tricky. Look at the diagram on the right. Several forces are acting on the 15 kilogram crate. Calculate what the acceleration of the crate will be. All right, so let's, let's look at things. First, let's look at the y. In the y direction, we can see it cancels out with each other because they're both being pulled with 150 newtons. But in the x direction, we have uh, several forces. We have 15 going to the left, we have 20 going to the right, and 10 going to the right. So this is how we're going to do this. We're going to do the sum of all forces. I'm going to say in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration. And we have three forces in the x direction. We have 15, we have 20, and we have 10. So I'm going to write it all down. I'm going to start with 15, and I'm going to make that negative because it's going to the left. So I'm going to do negative 15 plus 20, I'm doing plus because 20 is going to the right, and plus 10, 10 is also going to the right. The mass is 15, and acceleration is what we're looking for. So I'm going to rearrange this. Uh, this is going to be a total of 15, sorry, 30, yeah, 15. If I add this all up, it's going to be equal to 15 times A. And we could do some math, and we should know the acceleration is going to be equal to 1 meter per second squared. <clears throat> Okay, moving on. Look at the diagram on the right. Several forces are acting on the crate. If the crate is accelerating at a rate of 4.2 meters per second squared, what is the mass of the crate? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so uh, again, we don't have to look at the y direction because they cancel each other out. But in the x direction, we see there's a lot of forces. So I'm going to do the same thing. Maybe we'll do it here. Sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. I'll start with this 4. So negative 4 since it's going to the left. Minus 3 since it's going to the left. Plus 16 because it's going to the right. Is equal to mass, which we're looking for, times acceleration, 4.2. So what's this going to be? This is going to be 9. Yeah. 9 is equal to the mass times acceleration, 4.2. 9 divided by 4.2. We get 2.14 kilograms. Okay. All right, let's look at this next one. Hopefully you're getting pretty good at this. 
Look at the diagram on the right. Several forces are acting on the crate. If the crate has a mass of 14 kilograms and is accelerating at a rate of 3.8 meters per second squared, what is the force of F? Ooh, so this is a little different. We're looking for what this is. Okay, again, we don't have to look in the y direction because these two cancel out. But let's look at everything in the x. Sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We have 8 going to the left, so negative 8, plus 12 because it's going to the right. And I'm going to say plus f because it's also going to the right, but we don't know what it is. Mass is 14. Acceleration is 3.8. All right, let's simplify things a little bit. So I'm going to do 4 plus f because 8 minus 12. And then I'm going to do times 14 times 3.8. 53.2. Okay, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, manipulation here. So I'm going to bring this 4 to the other side. So I'm going to minus this side by 4, minus this side by 4. And then I get uh, 53.2 minus 4 is 49.2. So I should do F is equal to 49.2 newtons. All right, guys, that's pretty much everything. I hope that was okay. There's a few really tough problems in there. So hopefully you're able to figure all that out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.